And what I've done is I've actually pre-sectioned right there from the natural round of the head, the occipital ridge, right where it peaks. And I've followed this natural curve of the head shape. So if I keep my comb on the head, it will keep touching that peak of the head shape. And that, my friends, is what turns into the jawline. All right, so where you start this haircut is extremely important. Now, originally, I'm from Vidal Sassoon, and the original uh, classic graduated bob, we don't pre-section anything. Uh, you work off the parting down the center. And what you'll do is you'll just move up the head, increasingly moving up and pivoting through from vertical to more horizontal, diagonal like so. So you work from this to that and you would move up slightly with each one. It's an extremely difficult haircut because what you do on one side you've then got to do on the other, right? So the fluidity in getting it all to match is quite difficult. So that's why most people will disconnect this from this and will pivot from one point. So I'm going to show you a much easier version today than the classic, much harder version, all right? Again, we want to keep it simple because we're going to do this in the salon and we're always work working against that uh, time thing. So I'm going to start on this side. Uh, it's the harder side. I always put videos of this side and people are like, can you show me the other side? All right, so I'm actually going to cut this for you. So what's going to happen here is I'm actually going to we'll be working with the thumb leading the way. So that means my finger position means I need to point my fingertips down not up, all right? If I do that, I will always have the tendency to move the guide into what I am doing. So what happens is we flip the elbows into different positions and we work this way, all right? So that's how I'm going to work. I'm gonna be working from here and I'm going to be pivoting all the way up to this angle through here. So I'm gonna be work starting by working a vertical diagonal section and I'm going to be cutting the angle of the graduation. So nothing to do with 45 degrees or anything like that, all right? Don't believe in any of that rubbish. It's actually 90 degrees that the hair is going to be pulled, and I'm actually going to use a finger angle to create the graduation. Remember, there has to be a V for it to be graduation. What I don't want to do is copy the head shape. If I copy the head shape, that's not graduation, that's layering, and you can expect things to just collapse when it's layered, all right? Remember, graduation is construction, layering is demolition. And in our case, organized demolition, okay? We don't want it to be all over the place demolition. That doesn't work. So, we'll get started. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. Katie will only ask the good questions. The stupid ones won't get asked. Just kidding. <laughs> We know that there's no stupid questions. Well, there is. It's the one that you don't ask because you're scared of asking. So, if you do have any questions, please feel free because we're going to basically take you through all the bits and bobs of the graduated bob. There's many different variations of this technique. I'm going to show you a couple. All right? I'm going to do a very classic variation on this side, and then I probably might approach it a little bit differently on this side. But by then, we'll get Kelly in here, and she can start doing what she does with her razor. We have a question. We have a question. I can see you typing away there, aren't you? I'm cool. waving yeah. at everyone. Oh, hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would the angle look like if you were left-handed? Oh, if I was left-handed, if I was working on this side, then my fingertips would be pointing up. Okay? Remember, the thumb leads the way. It's very, very simple. You can always use that, the rule of thumb. Okay? It works for pretty much everything in hair cutting. I'm working on the outside of my fingers, and from the front, I'm going to move backwards, aren't I? Like so. So this is the way, right? Rule of thumb, remember that. So my first section is going to be a vertical diagonal section from that point at the occipital ridge. And that's going to be where I put my guide in there. So this is pure graduation, just going to build weight. Can you grab me a clip? Someone said you look like an arm wrestler. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Are we thinking like over the top? Is that where that's coming from? I from have the movie? No yeah, idea. probably. Yeah, it's probably the hat. <laughs> All right. So let's get back to cutting hair. Thank you. So, what we want to do, guys, look at what's going on here, is if I follow the head shape, 
my cutting angle follows the head shape, then when that hair falls, can you see what happens? It actually falls lighter up here, longer down there, and you can see that the hair is going to flick the opposite way. It won't turn in, it won't build any weight. It will just collapse. So what we're trying to do is we're actually trying to create more of a buildup of weight. So when that actually falls, it's much stronger, you see? So we have shorter at the base and everything's just getting longer and longer and longer towards the top. Again, you create a V in relation to the head shape. If it's parallel to the head shape, that is pure layering, okay? So let's get started in here. Again, I'm working on the harder side, so my fingertips pointed down. I'm going to tilt the head slightly. Because I'm working from the bottom up, I need to clear this area so that I can get in there. It's much different when I work down from the top because there's nothing really blocking my point of view and, and, and way in there. So on this side, I'm going to tilt the head slightly over to the side and that clears up this area. Also note, I'm not cutting with giant scissors, all right? I only want to cut from here to here, all right? So you're only going to use that amount of your scissor anyway. So if you want to be further away and have less control, that's up to you. But if you want to have control, you want to get closer with each hand. The closer they are together, the more in control you are. The further away, the less control you have. All right, so I would recommend moving down to a smaller scissor, a five inch or a five and a half, especially in graduated haircuts. So I create my angle and I'm just gonna start with that, working from short up to long. And I'm gonna stop right there at that first, second knuckle, excuse me, not the first knuckle. And I'm gonna re-comb everything. I'm gonna work through again from that point up. So taking my time, I don't want to rush and I don't want to twist my fingers. That's why I tilted the head to the side. We have a couple questions. Go on, man. Can you cut this horizontally and get the same effect? No, you can't cut it horizontally and get the same effect. You can cut graduation by working horizontally, but the difference is, if I cut vertically, it becomes very lean, it's flat, these are flat. But if I cut horizontally and I use elevation, when I check, I can expect to see a much more swollen, rounder, beveled graduation. So vertical creates this, horizontal creates that, all right? When do you start with a line and when do you not? Um, when do I start with a line and when do I not? Okay, the difference here, this is a graduated bob, not a bob with graduation. So not a line that's beveled, okay? Different haircut. I just did a demo on that. Let's see where that is. Yeah. So we just, I just did this the other day. This is, you can see the line and then it's graduated over it. So it's an uninterrupted line all the way through. Whereas this haircut's going to be completely different. This is graduation with a bob sat on top of it. So this is a foundation with a house sat on top of it. It's the classic graduated bob. So I'm not looking to keep it heavy down in this area. I'm looking to take that line that's probably down here and put it up here. That's the difference. Okay. So let's keep working through. My next section, I'm gonna pivot from there. Actually, sorry, before I go too far on, let's just look at what I've done, make sure I'm happy with that. That could have been faking, <laughs> couldn't it? So what I'm looking at now is where is this going to fall, all right? Where is that weight line going to be in this graduation? And do I wanna make that a little bit shorter? Because that's where my weight line's going to be. It's gonna be in that area. So coming through into here, all right? So. I'm going to just go with this. I don't need to go shorter. I don't have any requirements from my client. So I'll just go with that. But again, that's what you want to look at. Where do you want your weight line to start? Where do you want it to be? And if it's going to be triangular, that's just going to get heavier towards the front like so. If I want it to be square, that's going to come up and be more like this. All right. And that's what happens now within the haircut. So I take my second section. I pivot off of that first one. So it's a pivot point. Make sure that you stay on that point so that you can create fluidity. 
How important is body position when you start to pivot your sections? So body position in my case right here, I'm not really going to move that much to begin with. It's as I start to move more into that horizontal area, then I will start to move my body position into it. Right now, I'm just basically pulling towards myself because I'm working vertical sections. Once it starts to get more horizontal, then I'll start to think about my body position and where to pull to. Haircutting is created by the mechanics. Those mechanics are tension, over direction, elevation, finger angle, body position, and sectioning. That's how you create a haircut. So, taking that first section, using it as a guide, I'm not gonna pull back into that first section because I don't want it to get too heavy too quickly. I'm just going to follow through. Just using my previous section as a guide. How do you determine the length at the, the hairline? How do I determine the length of the hairline? Depending on what I want to do with this, how tight do I want that to work into? Again, it's all determined by you guys, not by me. It's, it's by you and your client. What lengths are you wanting? Where are you wanting to see it end up in the front and so on and so on? This is the hardest way to do, graduated Bob, by starting in the back and working through to the front. Because you're working from this point here and you're trying to end up to a spot in the, in, the, in the front there, you know what I'm saying? So what do you do in here to get to that? So I'm trying to show you what I would do. And then on the other side, I'll probably show you maybe an easier version of it. So again, I'm pivoting my sections from that point. So I'm slowly moving towards horizontal diagonal. So I'm working from quite lean quite heavy very quickly. Again, it's a bob that I'm moving towards, isn't it? So what I'm doing is I'm basically creating a, a foundation, a platform that I can sit the bob on top of. So this part is really, really important. So again, I'm not pulling down or backwards into my previous just yet. I'm just following that head shape through. Is your guide traveling or stationary? So if, if, I, if I'm not over directing guys, what would that be? You're, you're gonna answer your own question here. It's traveling, isn't it? If it wasn't traveling, it would be here in the middle, wouldn't it? I wouldn't need to do any of this. It would be redundant, there's no point. It's very important to understand the pure elements of hair cutting. All those things I just mentioned, the tension, the over direction, the elevation, the section angle, the body position, the hand positioning. It's very simple. You pull away from what you want to keep. So the only thing I wanted to keep here was this. So I pulled away from it with my finger angle. And right now, I'm not pulling away from anything. I'm just following that angle all the way through until I reach my desired geometry for the bob. So you can see what's happening. Nice, clean nape of a graduated bob, keeping that nice and even too. Again, I'm really just putting the shape into it. No refinement, that comes later. So I'm building the house first, I'll decorate it afterwards. I don't wanna to get too far ahead of myself. Keep it nice and damp so that I can control the hair. Same thing, guys. Using the previous as the guide. So you notice how I'm working 
on the inside of my fingers to do this. I'm not stood over here trying to do this outside of the finger business. And the reason for that is the inside of my fingers, when I cut on the inside of my fingers, the swing of my arm naturally wants to go down. It doesn't naturally want to go up. I have to make it do that. So naturally, I'm always going to want to pull down into those areas. So if I ever make a mistake, I'm always naturally going to, the mistake is to pull down. That's going to make it heavier towards the top. All right. If I work on the outside of my fingers, my elbow naturally wants to drop. So if I try to cook graduation on the outside of my fingers and I stop thinking about it and telling my elbow to stay in that position, I'm just going to start to layer it. Remember, layering is the complete opposite to graduation. All right, so we're now starting to see my weight line working through. So it is working with that triangular dimension that I'm wanting. I'm wanting to, to work with that jawline. So again, using the previous as the guide. And now, I have the foundation for the bob. But as with anything that you are going to put up against gravity, you must check it. You must make sure that it's perfect because I don't want this to be imperfect. And then I put the bob on top and it makes that bob collapse in certain areas. I want it to be absolutely on it. So now I'm going to come through and I'm actually going to cross check. So I'll come over here and you go over here. By doing that, what I need to do is go back the opposite way through. Not necessarily check this way and check that way. I've already seen it that way. I cut it that way. I've pivoted. So I really just want to go the opposite way to my pivot. And that is to work this way against it. Just like I would check opposite to my round layering when I pivot. It's the same thing with this. So diagonal back section in, and I can see my buildup of weight. And I'm, all I'm gonna do is just make sure that that is really clean all the way through. So just skimming those edges. If I see something that's a little bit more than that, then I will go back through the initial way just to check that. So working through each individual section, there's no guideline when you're checking. You check in each individual section. Just making sure that, that works into the nape. And see, quite happy with this. Nice clean graduation. So check the opposite way through. And that just kind of glues that in, guys. That solidifies that. We'll work with them. I don't know what that is. <laughs> just a little. All right. So now let's move into this next area. Let's do the bar. So right now, guys, if you think about what I've done is I've just set up a foundation. All I've got is that nape area in. So the graduated bob is to create the foundation and then to place the bob on top of it. So that's what we've just done. We've created a foundation. Now we'll place the bob on top. So think of it like architecture. This is the foundation. This is the house. So now this is my guide. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to bring these sections down onto that. All right. That's going to build my bob and also my weight line. So just moving up a little bit. It's going to be a stationary guideline, so I can use larger sections, but it is graduation. It's the most unforgiving of all techniques because you're working against gravity. So I'll take my time with it. So now all I'm going to do is use that hair that we just had 
as my guide. So I'm going down onto that. So now I'm working horizontally. Now it's about my body position. Where am I going to stand when I'm doing this? And if you think about it, all I'm going to do is I'm actually going to walk those two walls of the triangle, right? So I'm going to walk those parts of the triangle. So the triangle's here, guys. It's lighter in the back and it's getting heavier towards the front. So what I want to be doing is I want to be in this area through here. I don't want to be over here. I don't want to go in front of the ear. I want to stay behind the ear so that I can keep it on that triangular balance. So my feet are now going to dictate where I pull the hair to. So I'm going to stand in front of everything I do so I can see the direction of where it's going. But again, I'm not going to move past that ear. I'm literally going to stay in this area through here. So I'm walking this. And if you're using a tripod and you're teaching this, use your tripod. So I could make my tripod the triangle. Shorter in the center back and I could walk from here to that. All right? Keeping that zone so I don't round it through. Remember, you're coming in with scissors and if you're not careful, how you come in will actually take that front off. So I'm staying on that angle so that I create this. How are you doing? Good. Good. So now you'll see the bob's going to start to be formed through here. So if I wanted that to be higher up, then I would have gone shorter to begin with. So that first section, you've got to look at where that weight's going to fall and then look to see where that angle could possibly end up and you work towards that based on it being triangular or if you want being square or level moving through to the front not technically a square is it square has four corners and being even from front to back if you look at that line it's actually rounded it's not actually square all right we're getting too far ahead of ourselves in technical so again, bringing down onto that section at the occipital ridge and following that down through the jaw. So again, down into that jaw area of elevation. And you can see my fingers are parallel to my section angle. And I'm mimicking the jawline. Continuing all the way through. Again, now it's a stationary guideline. I'm bringing everything down to the same place. Now it is elevation, so I am using a certain degree of elevation, but I couldn't tell you what degree that is, guys. No one really can. You only really know if you're at zero or if you're at 90 degrees on the head shape, right? All that in between is kind of up for debate. You'd need a protractor to know that you're truly at 45 degrees. All I know is the lower I pull it, the heavier this weight line becomes. And the higher I lift the hair, the less that weight line is stronger. So that band of weight line isn't a line, it then becomes a band. All right, if I was to elevate higher up the head. But I'm using a stationary guideline. So I'm actually keeping this a external graduated hair curve and that means that weight is below the natural round of the head my elevation has been brought below the natural round of the head so that i can achieve a heavier build-up if i was to work more internally then i would be up here slightly below 90 degrees i'd still be building weight but not as heavy 
not the way to create a graduated bar. Yesenia says hi. Hi, Yesenia. Hi. And hi to everybody else that's tuned in. Thank you for joining us. So someone asked um, this part. Oh, sorry. Yeah. That yeah. part. This would, part. Would that be the corner of the triangle you're standing in? So the corner of the triangle, guys, is right here. It's triangular. It's not a triangle. So there's no point in the center back here. And obviously, this would be the base of the triangle, right? It's triangular, it's not a perfect triangle. So that means that it gets heavier towards the front. Whenever you hear triangular, that's what that means. If you hear round, it's the opposite to triangular. It's lighter in the front, gets heavier towards the back. Do you ever cut this using the wide teeth of the comb? Uh, do I ever cut this using the wide teeth of the comb? Uh, it's not up to me. It's up to the hair that you're working on, guys. So if I was working on a, a different texture of hair, I'd probably use the looser side of the comb. But with this mannequin, I need to use this side to keep it organized. So it's not really what I'm into. It's the, always this that determines everything. Be about control, right? Totally, that's exactly what I'm saying. It's yeah. all about me being able to control the tension of the hair. Uh, tension is the degree of stress that you place on the hair. More importantly, it creates clean haircuts or it creates unclean haircuts. Therefore, tension to me is probably one of the most important things that we actually use in hair cutting. Because if you don't get that right, this doesn't look right. It looks all lumpy and wobbly and all that. And then you have to come in and point cut and use your thinning scissors and all that to, to get rid of that. Um, I'm of the generation of hair cutters that likes to do it perfect to begin with. I don't want to build the house and realize that I fucked it up right at the end. You know what I mean? <laughs> Katie's face when I say that word. <laughs> So again, it's stationary. So you can see that I'm bringing down to that stationary area right where we stopped on that nape area. So if you think about it, you're just building a foundation, a base to place the bob on top of. So what you do with that base is very important because it will determine the outcome of what happens with the bob. That's why it can be quite a difficult haircut because you're working back here to start with and your client can see only up here. So for a while, your client has no clue as to what's going on until we get into that horizontal world and we bring the length into the front. So unless you know what you're doing back here, this won't end up where you want it to be. So maybe I'll show on the other side a different variation of it. So I'll keep going working this way through and once i finish that this i'm going to bring kelly in to join me and she's going to do some razor technique work in this shape as well so would you move your client's head the same way you're moving the mannequin exactly great question would i move the mannequin yes the more i move the more opportunity that i have to mess this up so i'd rather move you know that your chair has that thing on the back? That's there for a reason. So it doesn't lock into one spot. You can move it around and you can use your mirror to look at what you're doing and where you're standing and where you're elevating and where you're over directing. So yes, move the mannequin, move the, move the head around. So bringing down to that spot, how do I know I'm at the right elevation? Right, no one's asked that question yet. It's very, very easy. I can use the mirror, right? So I can use a reference point always to see if I'm bringing it down to the right spot. Or I can actually look at my cutting line and I can see when I bring this down to the right spot, that line just becomes more solid, right? And if I come up here, it starts to dissipate that line. So by me being in the right area, I really see a strong guideline. All those hairs line up together.
So again, body position, you can see that I'm keeping it behind this ear area so that I can keep the triangular balance of the haircut. If I come through here now, guys, and I try to cut it like this and stand directly in front of it, this cuts that way, doesn't it? So I won't be able to cut the right angle. I could switch and start doing that one, but again, I'm gonna come and do this. I might square or round that front area off. So I choose to just keep this right foot, excuse me, behind. And there I can create the angle that I need. So I'm putting myself in a place to succeed. I'm not putting myself in a place where I will create mistakes. Couple more sections. Start to bring her up more oh. level now. <laughs> See now, I'm in an area much more difficult, guys. I've moved above the round of the head. So I'm no longer in a vertical part of the head shape. I'm now in the more horizontal part of the head shape, more landscape. So this hair actually lives on the top of the head and then falls. It doesn't just fall like the hair on the sides or on the underneath of the, the occipital ridge. So I've got to be very careful with my direction here. So making sure that there's no over direction. Making sure that I literally cut it where it falls, but with elevation. This haircut, like every other haircut, has to look good without you involved. So I need to make sure that I cut this in place. So I'm only going to work in small increments now as I move through to the front. So I'm making sure that I don't work too much and cut too much past the area I'm working in. So again, looking at where the hair falls and cutting it just with elevation above that. If I keep combing from the roots to ends, I will change where this falls. It's just like when I cut the bob down here. I let the hair fall exactly where it's going to fall, because guess what? It's going to do that when you're not there. So make sure that it's perfect within its natural fall. If you're like manipulating the hair so much, your client is going to have to manipulate it as well. And chances are they suck at doing that, right? And that basically means they're not very good. For our international followers. <laughs> Not everyone knows what sucks means. Someone asked, if you were to do this cut on the other side, would you cut the back the same way, just stand on the opposite side? Exactly the same way. Again, I've chosen to do the harder side for you guys. Fingertips pointed down. The other side of my fingertips will be pointed up. It would be the same process. If I didn't do the same thing, I wouldn't get the same haircut. Use common sense, guys. Don't overcomplicate this. It's not that complicated. We have this habit of making it so hard, don't we? You know what I mean? It's really this simple. Pull away from what you want to keep. So now again, looking at where that falls. So there's no point in me taking this hair and combing it back here and cutting it here when it lives there, all right? So that's very important. As soon as you move into the hair that's above the natural round of the head, that you treat it accordingly. So I'm letting it fall where it's going to naturally fall, and I'm only gonna cut that where it lives. So you see there, I'm not directing the hair backwards or forwards. So again, direction extremely important in this. Same thing through the sides, looking at where that's going to be. Remember, not many people wear their hair in front of their cheekbones because then it's in their eyes. We wear it behind, so that's where I'm going to cut it. Does the tension change as you are cutting that top stuff? The tension changes according to what you're working with. So I can't say that, okay, down here I was using this amount of tension, now I'm using less. It's all determined by the hair. So if there is much more movement with this hair, then I would be using way less tension in this area, of course. 
Again, use your common sense. So again, keep that behind the cheekbone and using that elevation on that jawline, consistent all the way through. And that's the graduated bob without any refinement, no blow dry, just nice classic shape. So I've also got to cross check this, what I've just done. I can't just like expect it to be perfect. Doesn't matter how long I've been doing hair or how long you've been doing hair. So let's come through. So to check this, I'm actually going to work from the front and I'm going to work backwards with vertical diagonal sections. And what that's going to do for me is it's going to show me my buildup of weight through here. And I'm actually, let's see. Let's see. Not bad. So you can see the bevel. That's because it's horizontal. So I'll just check through all of these into the back. Not bad. It's perfect. It's so perfect. guys, thank you. <laughs> it, it should be when I'm really teaching it, right? It, <laughs> step by step, <laughs> it should be good. Um, but what I'm going to tell you now, guys, is can you see what I'm doing now? You could technically cut this haircut this way if you wanted to. You could start at the front and work backwards and create the same exact haircut. And if you've ever seen me create the back to front bob, I know you guys have probably seen me create the outline of the bob back to front, but the graduation on the inside, that's another tutorial. We did that recently, didn't we? Mm -hmm. yeah. You can find that uh, on my Instagram if you want to see that. As you can find all of our tutorials that we've done over the past year. Again, KDF Live, it's completely free. It's usually every week, depending on our schedules. We are literally full-time educators, uh, as well as Kelly's and KDF stylists as well. Here, here. Here. Who needs a real life? <laughs> well, my life has always been here. I was born into this, so I didn't really have a choice. It's always been there. So there we have the graduated bob cross-checked backwards. So again, I could do the haircut that way if I wanted to. Set your length up in the front where you want it to be, and you could work back off that. It's very simple, diagonal back sections, don't use any over direction, and it will get shorter and lighter towards the back. That's a little bit more advanced though, and we'll move into that in another class. Um, so before I do anything with the other side, I wanna bring Kelly in so she can get cracking, get started on her stuff, and then uh, you'll come back to me in shortly and we'll do the other side. So thanks, I'll see you in a minute. Yay. Come on in, Kelly. I'm coming. Right here? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Hello, everybody. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be working on a graduated bob as well. Um, and I've sectioned out just this one side to work on right now. But I'm going to work more in like a horizontal shape here. I want to do it with something a little bit, you know, with the razor, we get much more of like a looser finish kind of more lived in. I'm just going to put this out of the way. So what I'm going to be doing is like establishing my uh, length in the back here and then using my horizontal sections and elevation to create the graduation and then move into the front. So I want to get something with the weight line kind of sitting more in this cheekbone and jaw working in there to kind of build up that weight into kind of like a, a peak this way. So to do that, I am first going to establish my length in the back here um, and then move up. So here we go. I'm going to keep my client upright. I'm going to get these words a little damper. Thanks. Thanks. 
I had sectioned her out uh, earlier, so she's getting a little dry here. Okay. So taking a section that I can manage, but still wanting to have a little bit of weight to it to see where a lot of that um, natural texture is gonna pop through. You take too fine of a section, you can't really see how it clumps together. So taking a little bit of a bigger section to see where that S wave starts to hit. So I wanna go below that because I'm gonna to wanna to use that bend in the hair to, to help me as we're like moving into it. I want to enhance that. So I'm going to go just kind of about there, like below that S curve and starting with a zero elevation. Open up my razor here. Checking to make sure that I'm nice and low here and coming in with a big stroke with the, the uh, toe of the razor. So coming up that line there. Now this next section, I'm gonna to start to elevate here a little bit because I wanna create a bigger bevel in the back. And the way that I do this is at the top of each section, I'm gonna lay like the tip of my comb down. Uh-oh, dogs? Yeah. Dog fine. <laughs> <laughs> they sounded small. Putting, put it, just laying that, um, part of the comb down onto the, the scalp there to see where, you know, coming out, where that elevation is hitting with that comb. So that's where I'm gonna be pulling the hair to. So using my comb a lot during this and pulling this out onto my previous section here. Now, because I'm pulling into my previous section, it's gonna be getting longer with each one. I don't wanna have that heavy weight line at zero degrees with each section, so just this little elevation is gonna create that graduation. I'm just doing this all the way through. Do it. Do it! All the way through the back here. So same thing, so now checking. You want to check with each section because as you come up the round of the head, you can see if I follow that comb, use the comb to, to help me see where that elevation is. And then I'm going to keep myself nice and clean here by leaving out that first section. Come this whole thing. Now, and I'm staying, standing in one place while I'm doing this. I'm not moving my feet around. I'm not following the round of the head because I do want that large drop off. Okay, so I'm a little high there. <laughs> also, just keeping in mind how I'm pulling this hair, you know, I want to pull this flat towards me. I'm, I'm not trying to peek this out at all. I'm trying to keep this nice and flat. So knowing with the wall behind me kind of pulling the hair towards that. If I went, you know, tried to pull this hair and kind of like pulled away and kept going, it's going to be such a steep drop off. And I don't want it to be so stacked. I want this to be a little bit more fluid. Okay. Much faster. So then now there. So now when I'm holding my comb at the hair, I want to hit like right in the middle of my chest. So using my body, like body memory to understand where my elevation should be. Where's that body? Check. Okay, right there. All right, let me catch you up on where I'm at, guys. So, graduate Bob number two. So, this side, I started from the back and moved through to the front. 
On this side, I'm going to do it the opposite way. So I'm going to work from the front and work backwards now. So the difference between the two here is basically it's the psychology of what you're doing. If you start in the nape, your client can't see what you're doing. You can't really see where you're going with it, right? So it makes it a little bit more challenging to actually use that concoction of over direction and elevation and length to get where you need it to be. Whereas I could just come through in the front and I could put that weight exactly where I want and length where I want it to be. And I could use that as the guide for the nape and the back area. So that's how I'm gonna approach this. So it's sectioned exactly the same as the previous side. I've got the nape out of the way. And then I've sectioned basically just this front panel out of the way through here. And again, I'm working with the natural rounds of the head. So this is an actual ridge in the head shape. From this point backwards, the head shape curves this way, and that point forwards, it curves that way. So I'm just isolating that area. So I'm gonna start here. So my first cut, Oops, sneaking through again. Sneaking through, <laughs> is I'm just gonna establish where I want that length to be. So we'll just add a little bit of the old secret sauce, just to make that pull down a little bit. If I add water, gravity will pull that water through the hair and pull it down for you, so it kind of takes care of it for you. So what I'll do first is I'll actually just come in and place the comb. I'm using the larger side of the comb now, so that I don't rake through and pull on that, because this hair actually has to climb, actually fall over the ear, nothing's climbing. And I'm just gonna tap above the comb and above the ear just to set that in. And that's it. So that's the length I want to work with, all right? I'm not looking at matching it to the other side, guys. All I'm doing is showing you the technique of it. So that will be what I will work from now. And so now I'm going to graduate from that. So I'm literally doing the last part of the graduate of Bob first. Right? And that's exactly what we do at Knowledge Destroys Fear. We just flip things around and make it easier. You know, instead of working in the most difficult possible way. And just for a kind of reference, any way that Vidal Sassoon and the Vidal Sassoon company, and I'm from that, created a haircut, we created it to be the most difficult thing you could possibly do. That's why most of the people that come through Sassoon are very good at cutting hair. That's because they've done it in the most difficult possible scenarios that there is. Um, and being an educator for my entire career, it's been my mission to evolve that. And if you've ever taken a class with me, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's about flipping it around and work working something a little bit easier than what we're normally used to. So now I'm going to take that first section and I'm going to elevate it. And all I'm going to do is just elevate it just above the jawline, just kind of like I did the other side, exactly the same place. And I'm going to follow that guide. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring all of those sections down onto that one. Just like I did the previous side. The only difference is I'm starting from the front and moving towards the back. So I'll come grab you in a little bit once I finish this panel. Okay. So I moved into the front here. Um, section note just about like an inch or so above the ear coming into this front hairline. And I brought that down into zero elevation, brought that all the way down and kind of pinch this together around the ear. So knowing that we have that recession above the ear and we can't loosen that tension and hold this in the comb and razor at the same time. This is a little technique that I've come up with where just kind of pinch it right over that center of the ear, knowing that that's going to be the shortest point. So kind of over directing these two and then coming in behind and then just slicing that off underneath to create that bevel so knowing that that's going to pop up around the ear, it leaves that line down there right at the bottom of the bob really nice and flat. And we don't lose, you know, have that, the hole because of the ear. So now I'm actually just going to merge these two sections together. What I've sectioned away is from the front and from the back into one. And then just work off of uh, horizontal sectioning and using my comb to determine my elevation as I go through using a really nice large open strip to create a lot of um, space and movement. I'm gonna 
Close hmm. that for a second. <laughs> what happened there? I, no, I just closed my blade because oh. <laughs> I could feel Katie like slowly <laughs> stepping away. <laughs> Yeah, so just, you know, sections that I can manage about the, the width of my finger. And I'm going to be combing that down. As I work forward. So this is horizontal. Someone said horizontal. Whoa. Yep. Yeah. I'm also working horizontal. Mm -hmm. So using elevation to create the build up of weight instead of a finger angle. My finger angle right now is creating the shape of the haircut, the angle of the bob, so the triangular aspect of the haircut. So now you can see that that's done. Just give it a little cross check vertically so we can check the build up of weight. Nice and clean. So now I move into the back area. So the key thing here is to not cut the nape, to leave that until last. So literally I'm cutting the bob first, the house, and then I'll do the foundation afterwards. Completely backwards to what we're used to doing it. But in some cases, this is just an easier way. And not for everybody, everybody's wired differently. You know what I mean? But for those that are wired similarly to me, this is an easier variation. So now all I'm going to do is take this from here, as my guide, and I'm going to take that into the back area here. So I'm literally establishing my weight line first. I could have started this haircut back here at this spot if I wanted to. I'm sure some of you guys have seen me do that and I just create this part first, then I'll take the nape in afterwards. Once you understand how to cut hair, there's so many possibilities. And it's a lot of fun to play around with. That's what we do at Knowledge Destroy Sphere. So when you come take a class, that's what we're doing. We're just playing around with the possibilities of where these haircuts can go and how you can achieve them. So I'm just gonna continue in the same manner now. Everything's gonna be brought down onto that spot just like I brought everything down onto that spot in the front just like I did on the previous side. So I'm not changing anything as far as the integrity of the haircut. I'm just changing the process as far as where we start the haircut and where we finish it. Same exact stuff going on. What are you doing? See, I'm, I'm, now I'm moving. <laughs> what doing a haircut. What are you doing? <laughs> So now I've kind of come past that round of the head this way. So as I lay the comb up, you can see that it's going to get higher and higher with my elevation, but still pulling down into my previous section. So I'm going to still be creating graduation. So now that I'm coming into here, I'm just checking my elevation again. Right, into the, right there. Okay. Rib cage. Come on. Perfect again. So now uh -huh. you can see this, uh -huh. guys. You can <laughs> see that I'm building the bob first. So if you're not comfortable with starting here, start here. I just like to start here because then the client can see it's exactly where she has asked for, or he's asked for, or they've asked for. Whoever wants the bob. <laughs> All the bobs. Bobberts. <laughs> oh. Last section here. Same thing, combing the root into like its natural fall, but trying to keep that behind the cheekbone there. And now we're here, so I'm going to be pulling a little higher. Start back here, working my way around. Any questions about the razor? Uh -uh. Yay! You know, I wanted to um, just add a few things. We've got a couple of classes coming up. Um, 
in two weeks we've got our Knowledge Destroys Fear Razor class. Yeah. With Kelly. That's an opportunity to have literally, it's almost like a private class. We only allow seven people in here for classes. So that's eight, including myself, I'm teaching in, uh, in Kelly. So um, we've got that coming up. That's an in-person class here in San Diego. So if you're local or you're nearby, you want to come take a razor class and know all of this stuff. Kind of like how I teach haircutting with scissors. It's the same thing, but with razors. That's your class. Um, Hands-on razoring. It's for anybody who wants to start into razoring or has some experience, if, you know, anything to do with uh, trying to use this tool to further yourself as an artist and as a hairdresser. So I'm excited about it. It's a great class. I actually have incorporated the razor into what I do. Uh, so I encourage you guys to try the, uh, the razor, give it a shot. We've also got... Um, a virtual class coming up on February the 7th. We're going to go through theory. I'm going to take you through all the theory of haircutting. Um, all the what's, the why's, the how's, the when's, and the most importantly, the what ifs of haircutting. Yay, cross check looks good. Are we planning classes later on in 2022? Yes, uh, you, what you'll notice we'll start to add um, our schedule of classes throughout the year. Uh, we only wanted to just kind of start with a little one here in January. Um, but we generally teach about five or six classes here in San Diego a year. Um, I think our next classes will be in April. Um, and we'll be uh, doing both scissor and razor classes. Yeah. Also, keep your eye out for my educator class. I don't have a date for it yet, but we will be setting up a teacher training class this year. I've been asked Woo! for years and years and years to do this, and I've really just focused on people that really just want to know how to cut hair. Um, but I've been a teacher for a long time at the highest level, and I've taught many, many teachers over the years, and I'd like to start to get back into that. So if you're interested in taking a teacher training class with me, Keep your eyes open, we'll have the dates up soon. It'll be about a three day class, uh, probably in the summer. And yeah, should be fun. First, there's, there's stylists and then there's teachers. And uh, it's not that easy to teach this. So uh, I'd love to take you through the process of that. So it's just like the other side now, guys. I'm in the top area, so I'm looking at where this hair naturally wants to fall. And again, that's where I will cut it. I will just lift it to where it needs to be and I'll cut it exactly in place. Instead of me combing from roots to ends and shifting the hair into an artificial place. So again, being aware of what you're doing. Remember, whatever you do, there's a result. Sometimes not the one you're looking for. What's don't happening? just do things. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna kinda do, um, a, the similar technique, but with a little bit of a different... Well, I'm going to go from front to back, and I do this a lot <laughs> in the salon. For my clients, because people will point, like, I want my length, like, here or here, right? So this is where I start. Is this exactly what you just said? No, I'm just laughing at you. Because you said, I'm going to do a similar front. technique. Um, I'm going front to back. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> But I want to match his leg. Sorry, guys. <laughs> We've got the giggle. All right, well, tell me what you're doing before I tell what I'm doing. Okay. I'm going to put my length in, and then I'm going to use um, that length and work with diagonal back sections and pull that into the length and use that as I'm coming through. But I'm going to elevate as I'm going through to kind of give more of that swollen graduation as opposed to the using it like vertical to give it that really heavy graduation. So, I've finished the bump part. Let's just get some light on yeah, that so yeah. you guys can see that a bit better, guys. There we go. So you can see the bump part. I've established that through. Now I need to work the nape area. So the nape area, just importantly, is like, where do you start this? And you've always got to think about what the natural tendencies are. That's how you figure out how to cut hairs. What's going to happen if you do this? What's going to happen if you do that? 
Number one question I've always been asked is, what if? What if you did it this way? What if you did it that way? And my answer to the question is, try it. Whatever you're asking me, do it. See, that's exactly what I did. I tried every possibility and looked at what happened and that's how I learned to cut hair, basically. I got shown the mechanics, but I didn't truly, truly know it until I did it. And I made mistakes and we figured things out. So now you can see beautiful graduated bob all the way through in this top area, but now I've got to make sure that this is taken in. So if I work this way, I will have that tendency to pull the hair backwards and not necessarily keep it in line with what I've got here. So instead of working from back to front, I'm still going to work from the front towards the back. So I'm actually gonna come at it this way now with my fingertips pointed down so I can work this into the nape. And the reason I'm starting here is so that I don't leave this heavy. If I start here, I have that tendency to pull back. If I pull away from something, it gets heavier, all right? So that's why I'm gonna come through here and I'm gonna use vertical diagonal back sections. So I'm literally following the hairline in that side area there, side of the nape. And if I use no over direction through this back area, guys, I will technically get shorter and shorter and shorter. That's because I'm cutting graduation on a diagonal and I'm not using over direction. That's a quick way to get shorter than what you want. So there is the bob. So all I'm gonna do now is take the nape in. Able to point in so I can make sure that it's graduation and not layering. And then, it takes that in nicely. And I'm just gonna to continue to do that all the way through. Don't wanna take it. Lyle off. says hi. Oh, hi Lyle. Hi, hi Lyle. Lyle. Okay, so this is the technique that I was showing you, um, but I just wanna show you it on over this little bit longer so you can see. As I'm pulling down, I wanna, you know, I can't tap that, right? So I'm going to grab this all together, make sure that this hairline here is brushed back. And then once I can pull that down and see, I just pinch this all together so that's nice and even. And then I can see underneath where I'm gonna come through and just slide, just tap that, tap, 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 tap until that falls out to give it that nice, clean beveled. That's a bevel. That's a bevel right there. I'm gonna do that with this whole front section here. Bring that all down to that zero elevation. That same technique to make sure that I keep that bevel in there and that I'm not elevating because I'm pulling that. My tension is in the holding hand here. Pull that down nice and flat. Come on guys, get in the potty. Okay, and then we just shoot. Just pinch them all together. If you try this technique out, just make sure that you move really slowly, tiny little circles with your blade because it is a bit aggressive. <laughs> but once it's gone, it's gone. And once it's off, it's off. Pink. Bevel. Yay. Okay, so now I'm going to be moving into the back. So just following that hairline down. And using that length over the ear as my guide as I come in. So you can see the angle that I've created. And if I'm pulling that out, so I'm hitting my target kind of going that way. Here we go. nice about the razor too is that you know I can use my blade to kind of exaggerate the angle as opposed to having to squeeze my fingers in there yeah. so if I have a tight tension on on the hair as I'm holding it I can see where my the direction like the line that I'm supposed to be following and I can just get closer to the scalp with my blade as opposed to having to bend like wedge my hand into there to create that angle 
kind of similar with like face framing stuff, you know, with the, or, you know, really extreme concave layers. You don't need to have like such control with the holding hand as long as you can get that blade in there to accentuate the length. A little bit more free flow. previous. You can see my length underneath. So I'm actually going to come in underneath here because I can see now the angle that I've created. I'm going to come in underneath to create that graduation there. And with the razor, it's much more about balance as it is like exact precision on the ends. But every Everything that I comb and the way that I comb it and how it's all clipped away and all the technique, it's all very intentional. Looks a little more free flow, but it's all very intentional. I feel confident coming in underneath with this because I have such a strong um, guide from pulling everything down to that zero elevation. It's been really cool, like, um, with these Mondays and, and our, you know, KDF lives, uh, it's kind of pushed my... Uh, my skill level a little bit, like try incorporating what I learned from listening to DJ talk about haircutting, because I learn something every time, and then trying to incorporate it into the into how I would use it with the razor has been really um, exciting for my brain. <laughs> Sometimes it keeps me up at night, but in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> Just thinking. So I've finished. I've got that shit. Well, I'm not finished. I've just. Finish the wet part of the haircut. And you can see I've got the bob and then I've got that underneath and the an ape area in there now. So two variations of the same haircut. You take your pick on which you want to do. Try both, see what works for you. See what's easiest for you. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed those two variants. So again, guys, February 7th, you can catch me us, we're teaching a uh, Knowledge Destroy Sphere theory class. Um, it's about a two to three hour class. I'll take you through absolutely everything you need to know about hair cutting. And it's not me stood at a board just pointing out things. I'm actually going to physically cut every single technique and shape that you could possibly do and explain what does what um, with hair. I'm not going to do it with thread or yarn or anything like that, just pure hair. So you can see exactly what happens with the fabric that we actually cut. How are you doing? I'm good. Yeah. I moved into the top here. Oh, dang it. Mm -hmm. I'm just, it's the same, you know, the same technique, just kind of pulling that around and then coming in underneath to create that graduation. I can show you a cross check here. Let's see. <gasps> That's a graduation. Wow! <laughs> yeah, and then this last section here. Same thing, making sure that that hair, though, it's really important, especially with the razor cutting, is to make sure that hair is falling at the natural fall, that I'm not really over-directing or pulling that into it with the bob here. So these. You can see that angle that I created. I'm coming in underneath. Horizontal. I thought it'd be horizontal, but yeah, you lied. I lied. <laughs> you lied. <laughs> That's a diagonal back, not a horizontal, my friend. Exactly. Knowledge lies before fear. <laughs> Sometimes you change your game. 
game in the middle this of a haircut, true. you know? <laughs> G-bobs, G-bobs. It's cool, too. I haven't done the two different haircuts on one doll head like this before, so I'm excited to see what that looks like when we're all finished. Mm -hmm. The light is shining. There we go. Last piece right there. It still has a lot of structure, but it's just more. There's um, so much more movement. Broken on the ends there. But yay! Pretty. Woo! So Magic. Let's, let's see what this side is. It's always fun to analyze these, like using these different techniques. And then I think the more that I've been like exploring these different techniques and trying different ways, now when a client brings in a picture and they're like, this is what I want you can see the difference in like just, especially the graduated bob, what a diff, like a tiny little difference, just a little bit of technique can, can make. Where with this one, we have all of that missing in here, right? All of that, that's mm -hmm. really pushing that forward. But on this side. You've got more of a bob with graduation on this side versus a graduated bob on the other side. Yeah. Very cool. Yay, very cool. All right. Fun. Thanks, guys. Hey, guys. Thank you very much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope it was very informative for you and that you got what you needed out of it. Cheers, Giza. Good to see you, buddy. Hope you're feeling better, pal. And, uh, yeah, join us. Uh, we'll be back. Well, next week I'm teaching a class, but I'm sure we'll put a live on while I'm teaching so you guys can see what happens in a Knowledge Destroys Fear hands-on class. Um, again, sign up for our theory class. You can do that by following the link in my bio. Um, everyone gets a copy of the class, even if you can't att uh, attend it live. But yeah, thanks again, guys. Love you guys. See you later.